So, before I get to the moving forward series for the Houston Dynamo, which, of course, it's been delayed because I've been having a lot of schoolwork, a lot of family issue, and on top of that, I have to do the previews and reviews and also the Sports Hub series, which is why this video has been delayed for a couple of days. Um, but before I talk about this, I have now officially launched my Patreon page and I know I should be doing this in a separate video because you know how I've been kind of talking about way back in May about how I'm about to launch the Patreon page and I kind of just never launched it. You know, I was planning to do it back in June, but you know, I never did it until now. It literally just came up on top of my mind yesterday that you know, what exactly happened to my Patreon page? Oh yeah, that's right. I haven't even launched it. So, it's now officially launched. And obviously, it would be nice for you to go there and support my Patreon. Uh, obviously, I'm not forcing anybody to do it. It's completely optional. But as of now, it is kind of tough time for me because I am running out of money. Like seriously running out of money which is why when you look at some of the sports hop series i've been doing it is not as far as i usually go to do the sports hop series because i am running a little bit tight on the old budget and yeah so if you of course want to be my patreon go ahead to my patreon page and click that and you can select how many dollars you want to commit per month and again it's completely optional. I am not trying to force anyone to sign that the or to become a Patreon in my Patreon page. And I, of course, will leave a link in the description below to my Patreon page. And for now on, I'm just going to do it for every single video. But yeah, either way, with that little ad out of the way, let's talk about the Dynamo. So this is a bit interesting because... I think if there is a team by the, at the end of the season that I think is probably too good to be eliminated, I know that kind of doesn't sound right because when you're a team that is eliminated, you deserve to be eliminated. You can't just say that they're just too good to be eliminated and that they probably doesn't deserve it. But you can kind of make the case with the Dynamo because... If you ignore the win, draw, and loss kind of record, you look at the stats and you look at what they've been putting on the pitch, it definitely looked like a playoff team. I mean, you know, like I said, if you ignore the 9, 8, and 15 kind of mark and the fact that they only got 35 points this season, they've scored 53 goals and conceded 53 and has a goal differential of zero. And keep in mind, Eight of those 53 goals was conceded in the last two games. And that's when they pretty much just gave up because they know that they're eliminated from the playoffs. And usually when that happens, teams just kind of gave up and think that it's over. We can just looking forward to the all season and get ready to go on the golf course and just does not want to play soccer for the remaining time. Or maybe it's because Houston are trying to save some energy for CCL. But, you know, if you th not include those eight goals that they concede in the last two games, they technically has a plus five goal differential. And that is a goal differential that is better than the sixth place team right now, the seventh place team right now, and also the fourth place team in the Western Conference. And it's the same with the Eastern Conference. They have a better goal differential than the Union and DC United right now, and also Montreal. So... Yeah, it's very kind of odd, the fact that they have a very good goal-scoring kind of mark, and the defense is, you know, I wouldn't say very good, but it's kind of like right around the average of what MLS is in terms of the amount of goals a team can see. But in terms of the top goal score for this team, obviously Moro Minotas with 16 goals, which is the record for the most goal scored by a Houston Dynamo player but in a single year. Uh, Albert Elise with 11 goals, Thomas Martinez with 5, Romeo Kyoto with 5, and Felipe Cinderos with 4. Uh, the top assist leader, Romeo Kyoto with 11, Thomas Martinez with 
11 also. Albert Feliz with 9. Bonet Garcia with 6. And Eric Alexander with 2. So when you look at this stats, it's pretty clear that they do have not only a good good attacking force, but they also have a very good midfield. I think throughout the season, as much as I've been talked about Manil Tez and Elise in Kyoto, I even talk a lot about Thomas Martinez and how he has definitely kind of fly under the radar in terms of one of the best midfielder in the league. I mean, 11 assists this season. That is kind of incredible. And I think the reason why he's kind of fly under the radar is the, the goal tally is not up there. And when you look at guys and midfielder that has 10 plus assists, they usually have the goals kind of like right up in the double digit mark too. But Thomas Martinez alongside with Bonnet Garcia has been really good for this Dynamo kind of midfield. And, you know, the attack, like I said, with Minota's 16 goals, which is one of the most in MOS and the most ever by a Houston Dynamo player. Yeah, this team has a very good attack and in the midfield. So you might ask, why did they gone really, why did they get eliminated this season? I mean, if they have a good midfield and good attack and the fact that when you look at the goal that they conceded 53 which is not you wouldn't say they have the worst defense in the league why in the world did they end up finish in 10th in the league the answer is been what i've been saying throughout the last four months which is blown leads i mean how many times did i have to say and this is probably the final time i will say with the dynamo because even if they continue to blow leads in these last two games i'll just say well they're just this is just classic kind of dynamo and i'm not gonna really mention it because that's been the story of this season and it is i mean how many times this season that they have dropped points i mean i think besides my quakes team this team probably is the softest team in the last 10 minutes and probably have blown either a chance to get all three points in a game or a chance to get a point on the row or at home and yeah i mean it if you look at all those points that they have dropped this season i guarantee you if you calculate all those points that they have dropped if they didn't drop those points and maybe didn't even drop like more than half of the points that they have this season because conceding late goals they should be in the playoffs right now they should be at least challenging around fifth or fourth place but because of the blown leads and a lot of that has to do with just a lapse of concentration from this team in the last 10 minutes and also the fact that Wilma Cabrera just makes some very stupid substitution and yeah I I don't like some of the substitution that he, he made when he decided to just sub out his best player and think that the game is over and then bring in some weak players on the bench and it's clear that another thing that I want to say with this Dynamo is that they do not have a strong bench. And that is what they need to do in the offseason. And actually, I'll, I'll talk about it when we get to the moving forward series. But, you know, they just blown too much lead. And just gave up so many points that they should have not give up if they could have hold on in the last 10 minutes of the game. Or just the last 15 minutes of the game. Um, the second thing that went wrong this season is that they kind of collapsed after July. So with all those blown leads and all those kind of points that they dropped in the last 10 minutes of the game, it kind of really took a toll on this team. And it really kind of just, you know, when you blown lead so many times, it eventually is going to take a toll on you. It's going to get into your mind where, you know, you're just, you're just mentally kind of tired. The fact that even as much as you tried for the first 80 minutes, you know that the last 10 minutes always kind of haunt you. So in some way, this team kind of stopped trying after July, or I shouldn't say stop trying because I think that's a little bit too harsh to the Dynamo and certainly for Dynamo fans to hear. Uh, but they kind of collapsed after July. I mean, they did not get a win in that entire month. Well, they did get one win in the beginning of the month, but they didn't get their next win after 10 games. So they went on a 10 game winless stretch. And that pretty much just put the final nail in the coffin in this Dynamo season. Knowing that for sure that they're not going to make the playoffs this season. And also another problem that they have what went wrong is that they still cannot win on the road. 
Um, I know I haven't mentioned this a lot with this team because I've been talking about the blown leads a lot. But when you look at the record there on the road, it's the exact carbon copy of last season. I mean, I think last season they got one win on the road. It's the same case again. One win on the road. This team just cannot win the road. And I honestly don't know why exactly this team can't figure it out. And because this season, when... You know, last season, the reason why they made it to the playoffs was because they had just an incredible record at home and BBVA Compass Stadium was a fortress. This season, it's anything but a fortress. I mean, they they lost five games at BBVA Compass Stadium. And when you have that bad of a road record combined with a home record that is, I wouldn't say terrible, but it's not what you would say that is a team that desperately need to rely on those home home wins and when they don't do that this is exactly what happened to this season for the dynamo with those five losses and i'm pretty sure most of those losses was because of the fact that they dropped points late in the game but what went right for this team obviously the the biggest thing that went right for them is that at least they got some silverware uh, after all, they got the first silverware of the season by any team with winning the U.S. Open Cup against the Union. And certainly, I didn't expect the Dynamo to actually go all the way. I mean, even when they were struggling in July and going through like the semifinal and the quarterfinal stage, I thought for sure that was the stage where they're just going to lose because they're just doing so bad in the league. How in the world are they going to go into the U.S. Open Cup with any confidence? But... Yet somehow, in some way, they were able to move on. And they also beat LAFC, which I thought for sure LAFC was the favorite in the U.S. Open Cup. Because at that point, it was between the Union, Chicago, and Houston. I mean, those are not really strong teams. I mean, the Union eventually kind of got a little bit better. And I thought when the Union played the Dynamo, I thought for sure Philly was going to win that one because... Houston has been kind of inconsistent lately coming into that game and since the Union has just been red hot for the last couple of months and in most of the games in the second half that they have looked very good I thought for sure they were gonna lose that but yet somehow in some way they showed up in that Open Cup game the Union didn't and they won the US Open Cup for the first time in their club history and obviously as I mentioned before Minotas with the single season record of the most goal ever scored by a Houston Dynamo player in a single season with 16. Um, the record was actually 14, I believe. So he actually have extended his record in the last game against LAFC when he scored the first goal in that 4-2 loss. Um, and also, they have a very deadly front three. I mean, Minotes, Elise, Kyoto, that is just an incredible front three. And I know... Doing the middle part of the season when Elise and Kyoto was kind of struggling. You know, Minotas was still kind of producing the goals. If you have those front three that gets into a good form, they can really rip apart any defense in the league. I mean, when you Minota, have Minota scoring 16 goals with Kyoto with 11 assists and then Elise scoring goals and also putting in assists, that is just a deadly kind of front three that this team has uh but moving forward for this team obviously they have ccl next season because they won the u.s open cup the question is how far they can go and i think how far they can go really depend on what they do doing this off season and how i really think they need to add some death pieces you know this team when i look at this team it's definitely not a bad team but one thing I am very concerned about this team is that it does not have a lot of depth. I mean, like I said, the bench on this team and the reserve on this team is not very good. And I just think that when you have CCL commitment and you also have league commitment, if they want to go deep into CCL, that could really create a problem for Houston. And... You know, if they want to go for next season, they really need to get some backup kind of pieces. They really need to get get some guys that that could come off the bench and make a big impact for this team, or just give give some rest for for Minotas, Kyoto, and at least when they when if they do move very deep into CCL, those 
guys that they bought in for Minotas and Lee's in Kyoto could play in the league game and they'll, they'll still be fine in the league game. But the most important thing is, is that they need some depth pieces in this team. Um, and I pretty much just said it with with the second thing that they need to do moving forward. And also the third thing, and I don't know if this is going to happen. I think this is very unlikely that it's going to happen. But Woman Cabrera future is kind of a little bit uncertain. I mean, I've been hearing a little bit of report saying that Wilmer Cabrera could potentially be leaving and could potentially get far from this team, which, you know, I feel like, I don't think that that is going to happen. I feel if you're going to fire him now, this would be, it's kind of a weird timing because you just won the U.S. Open Cup. And sure, yes, you did not have a very good season. And the fact that he has been kind of tactically in app in the last 10 minutes. But still, he wants you silverware. And now you're moving into CCL, potentially getting all these guys back and trying to turn the page and trying to work on just not conceding so many goals in the last 10 minutes. And maybe you bring in some set, some, some depth pieces on this team. And all of a sudden, this team can really look very dangerous. So I think Cabrera leaving is probably very unlikely that is going to happen. I think he'll probably stay another year. Although, to be fair, I haven't checked out to see when is his contract up. If his contract is up this year, then yes, that could get a little bit interesting. Although, I still think that, you know, with CCL coming for, for Houston next season and you know, for them to try to make a deep run into that. And I know a lot of people said that Houston is probably not going to make a deep run, mainly because they just don't have enough depth pieces on this team to make a deep run. Still, I think if you just kind of get a new manager in into the new season, then it can really also hurt their CCL run because you know the new manager will have very short kind of time to trying to get things right they'll they'll have a short off season before playing in CCO in February and yeah I, I just think that I don't think Cabrera is gonna leave I think he's gonna stay at least for another year or two now if next season things goes bad for this team again and they have the same resort but this time they don't win the U.S. Open Cup then yeah I think maybe Wilma Cabrera could actually leave leave next season but as of now i think it is very unlikely he is going to be one of those managers and one of the many managers this season that has been sacked from the club but yeah either way that is pretty much it for my houston dynamo moving forward series tomorrow i will be doing the new england revolution moving forward series because remember the refs just got eliminated from the playoffs back on saturday so I'll make sure I'll do that one tomorrow. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash that subscribe button. And yeah, I will see you guys next time.